I dance because I cannot walk. The ground, it is too strange. I must count one, two, one, two, three. Autistic people are given many different kinds of labels by the non-autistic world. One of them is clumsy, and by that measure, I suppose I am. It is a conscious effort for me to walk in a straight line, navigate across bumpy surfaces, and stroll and chat at the same time. Yet, how does clumsiness explain the ability to dance? When there is music, my body becomes freed from the tyranny of the walk, and the ground doesn't seem so daunting anymore. Another description that autistic people cringe at is that we suffer from autism. We do not suffer from autism, but we do suffer from social discrimination, stigma, and ignorant misrepresentation. How about patronizing condescension? We face that a lot of the time. So what is autism? Autism is a difference in neurological function. It is the way my brain works that is not the same as the norm. The medical model of autism paints autism as a bleak, barren existence, devoid of empathy, lacking in social reciprocity, and mired in monotonous repetition. In truth, the autistic's world is a rich, thriving ecology of multisensorial experiences and insights with juxtapositions of acute challenges, unusual abilities, and everything else in between. Autism awareness seems to be a trendy topic nowadays with all kinds of events organized in the name of autism by mostly non-autistic persons. Just what are you being made aware of? And where are the actually autistic voices in this grand cacophony of opinions and interpretations? Well, here's the reality. Autistics live in a world designed by the normative, where non-autistics, armed only with the medical model, claim expertise, despite having little or no understanding of actual lived experience. Meanwhile, the actual autistic people, some even highly qualified professionals, struggle to make their voices heard on the autism platform, which is about us and should belong to us. In 2017, I stumbled across a top university's School of Medicine Autism Resource webpage. To my horror, the word disease was used to describe autism. That's not only inaccurate and outdated, it's utterly insulting to autistic people. I sent them two emails, which were ignored. Many months later, my non-autistic colleague wrote to them, guess what? The offensive word miraculously immediately disappeared. This is the kind of social political climate in which autistic people are forced to live. A major paradigm change is urgently needed. How can autistic people grow and thrive, not despite autism, but because of the unique features? And what can society learn?
from autistic people? Well, first, accept, respect, and embrace. It is time to move beyond mere awareness of autism as uncomfortable anomaly and into accepting and embracing autism as a natural variation of human neurodiversity. There should be equity and respect. Just like anybody, autistic people come from all walks of life with different dreams and hopes, struggles and abilities. Every person has a narrative, a story to tell. Listen to us, especially on matters concerning us. And then advocate. I am a board member of the Disabled People's Association Singapore. And advocacy organization that believes in the statement, nothing about us without us. At the DPA, training is provided to members who wish to learn how to advocate and to develop leadership potential. Well, advocating on behalf of autistic people is wonderful, but not enough. We have to advocate for ourselves. With or without words, everybody can learn to advocate. Even very young children can do this. And you will be surprised at how much we can contribute, not only to the autism discourse, but to wider social inclusion. Discover and empathize. Have you ever made the effort to find out why we do the things that seem so strange to you? Why do some autistics find it painful to look you in the eye? And does it make you uncomfortable when you see us flapping our hands, spinning around, or fidgeting? We call that stimming. Did you know that stimming can be a calming activity for our nervous energy and anxieties, or ways to express unspoken emotions like love, joy, excitement, and distress. Why do some autistics seem to connect better with animals than with other human beings? This is Lucy like a charm trained to mitigate my sensory anxiety. We belong to the organization Mind Dog Australia. Rescued from the cruel greyhound racing industry, Lucy is now my muse and closest companion. To me, Lucy is not just a substitute cute human on four legs. Instead, I cherish her canine embodiment as different from my human one. And it is this very difference that unites us together in our shared space in time. In my PhD dissertation, I coined the term Clement Space, inspired by Lucy's gentle, wordless example. She has taught me the importance of seeking and creating pockets of calm and restoration everywhere we go. This is to reclaim sensory equilibrium and strength for the journey ahead without burning out or melting down. Perhaps the reason so many autistic people find it easier to connect with animals is the empathic connection and appreciation of difference rather than insistence on bland uniformity. Ironically, instead of being empathy impaired, autistics and their animals can teach the world a lot about empathy if you care to learn. What about ability and disability? 
Some autistics may find it difficult to do certain daily tasks, like tying shoelaces. And others are unable to communicate in a language that the normative can comprehend. This does not mean that we have no intellect. It does not mean that we do not understand or hear what you are saying. So please, do not talk over us as if we're not there. Acknowledge us. Presume competence. It is not hard to do. Our autistic world is so full that we may react in ways that are different and to things that you may not even notice at all. We're not smiling at nothing. We're not crying for nothing. And we're certainly not engrossed in vacuous monotony. Have you ever stopped to consider that perhaps those people you call low-functioning are actually engaging in intimate conversations with a complex universe that is far more magnificent than yours. Welcome to my world. I am autistic. This is my brain. This is my body. And this is my life journey. Thus far, I've spoken about how you, the normative, may help autistic people grow and thrive. Well, the favor isn't just one way. When we flourish, so will you too. Now, let me invite you into my domain and share with you some ways of appreciating the world from within my autistic paradigm. Inside a clement space, of my own, where there is sensory peace, there is amazement and delight. Things that are intrusive and assaultive when experienced in the normative context. Lights, sounds, textures, smells can fill me with wonder when I engage with them on my own terms inside my own space of mind. Think through the body. Whatever body you may possess, sense and therefore exist. Sense your senses and allow your senses to sense yourself and everything around you. To the non-autistic, it may seem that the autistic person lives in a vacuum, but it is the complete opposite. Communicate with and through your senses, elements that continuously impact your body, every nerve, every fiber, the smallest, most insignificant detail can be extremely important. Become truly aware of every vibration, from the minuscule to the colossal. Even the reverberations and echoes that your body creates. Begin with the most basic, tiny organism. Remember, imprint, expand. Then reach outward, sensing every variation as they greet, touch, and intertwine. And then remember, imprint, expand. Notice how independent entities meet form different entities, patterns, and rhythms. 
This is not meaningless repetition. It is enchanting, organic development. If you approach the luscious fabric of creativity in this way, you will not be confounded because the truth will be sensed inside your very being. Imagine a world in which different kinds of minds come together to share unique strengths and inspiration. Imagine safer, inclusive communities where each individual is embraced Imagine a neurocosmopolitan culture of vibrant energy. It is not my purpose to fix what is broken, but to empower beauty in the vulnerable and the unnoticed. Dancing with my shadows, whispering, Good night, humming silent wishes, smiling deep inside, dancing with my shadows, jar full of moonbeams. Come, lay down beside me, wake up in my dreams.